I'm Sean Winters. I'll be working with you today on working on master slides. So we'll be going and Google Slides only, that'll be the only software we use, and we'll be working on how to kind of lock down different elements of your slideshows. So how we're going to do this is actually building a slide with some unique elements. So I am the digital learning coach for Union County. I work with our entire district on doing their uh, Google trainings and on Microsoft trainings and anything technology related just to enhance the classroom. So you can reach me on Twitter. You can, I've got several YouTube videos. You're more than welcome to check out my channel. And in fact, I encourage you to do so because there's a lot of elements in there that are very handy for you guys. So the first thing I want to talk about is that Bitmoji classroom or something of similar to it. So you have a master slide that's basically hyperlinking to different elements. And with this, this is a great lesson on just how to utilize master slides on a more basic idea. So we'll get going on that, and that'll be our first focus. So I have all my elements for a Bitmoji classroom here together. I've got a post for the assignment that they're going to be doing. I've got different activities, and every little object is just has a link attached to it. I just take an object, I right-click, and I say link, or I do Control-K. I put the links in I need. Now, if I was to share this out with my students, I might come across a couple of issues. If it was an, each student getting their own copy, they might actually start moving things around that don't need to be moved. They might go in and break the link to where there's no longer a link to it. I might see them actually take my entire object and delete it away, and then it's gone and they don't have it. If they didn't know how to restore it, that creates an issue. So what we're going to do is work around for that. Now the First natural workaround is, well, I just want them to share it out. I'll just share it as a present mode. And there it is. The issue with the present mode is it's hard to sometimes find the objects you need. You kind of have to hover around until you see the cursor change from a regular arrow cursor to the select object cursor. But you'll notice, I mean, it, it works. It does a great job on here and it sends it to where they need to go. What we're going to do is look at how to use master slides to make this where it's a little more secure and the elements are locked down. I'm going to grab every object that's actually on this slide. And you see all the different pieces that are here. And I got a couple options to how to draw, do that. I'm going to drag and select everything. And that's going to allow me to grab every piece. Or I'm going to do Control A, which Control A is actually that edit select all. And so I'm grabbing everything, and then I just want to copy it. So I can hit Control C, or I can select Copy, and then I want everything gone. I want a blank canvas to work off of. Now I'm going to go to View, and then go into our Master Slide. Now what Master Slides is going to do is going to allow me to basically create a background of all these pieces. So I'm going to hit Paste in that. Once I hit that Master Slide, you'll notice that it, every layout is going to get this now. And now when I look here, I have all the little pieces still here. But when I go back and I just look at this in normal view, all this is just background objects. None of it is clickable. None of it's movable. I don't have any risk of my students editing anything. Now this is where that present mode gets really nice too. I go back to present mode. And once I'm in present mode, you'll notice when I start hovering things, I still have that same feature. And it still works. All those hyperlinks are still in place, but I have no risk of my students accidentally deleting it before they get a chance to actually go into present. And so it secures everything down. I don't have to worry about editing those pieces out. And then my next assignment that I do, I can actually go in and I can do this actually a couple of ways. Um, I can build on top of these where if I want it. Well, I don't want this to take them to PBS Kids anymore. I want it to take them somewhere else. Well, the best option is to go over and go to View, go to the Master Slides again. And then while I'm in Master Slides, I can come over. Oops, let me make sure I'm on the Master one. I can click here, and I can edit the link. And I can change it to where it's going to take us somewhere else. The other option I have is actually to build on top of your master slides back into the main slide. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to go to view. And so right now, if I just was to click that, it would take me to master slides. I can actually put an object right on top of this. 
And so this is nice when I just want to make one little correction that I'm going to maybe potentially undo later on. And so this is just a temporary fix. I'm going to put an object on top of the controller. And so keep in mind, in the background, that controller was still taking us to the PBS Kids games. Well, right now I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to link or I can do control K on this object. And now this new link is going to take me to google.com. So I just want it to now become a search engine. Got to make sure I hit apply. Now, this looks a lot uglier than that controller, but what I can do is on this object, I can change it to be transparent. But then I got that floating border. Well, I want that gone too. So I'm going to click the border color and I'm going to make that transparent. So now I've got this piece of glass sitting in front of the controller that is taking me somewhere else. So now when I go to click on it, you'll see it's hyperlinked. But then when I do present, that master slide, like I said, had us going to PBS Kids. Well, I have an overlay basically on top of that that is going to take us to Google instead. So now when I click it, you see it's loading google.com instead. And then the next time I go to work on this, I might want it to go back to PBS Kids. I might want it to go to the PBS Kids so I can click what, that little overlay that I put on top of it. And I'll just delete it away. And so really neat workaround on making sure your uh, classroom slide has uh, more controllability and nobody's accidentally getting rid of what you want them to have. So that's what I have for this and uh, we'll move on to our next topic. The next trick we're going to do is a scientific method. So we're going to make our own worksheet where students fill in specific information and have it where elements are where they can type, but other elements are locked in place. So we're going to take these different phases and we're going to formulate our own worksheet layout. Okay, we're going to work in master slides and our goal this time is create a worksheet for students to work off of that is going to utilize the slide layouts. So we're going to make a slide for phase one, a slide for phase two, and a slide for phase three. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to actually select this first phase and all of its components. I'm going to copy it. So I'm just copying. And if you want, you can delete that to keep track, but I don't ever worry about it. Go to view, and then we're going to go to master. Now from here, I have all these different layouts. And I'm just currently sitting on that title slide. I'm going to go through it, and I'm actually going to delete all these other ones so i'm just tapping the delete key on each slide and now i'm going to go and i'm going to say new layout i'm going to rename this i'm going to call this phase one so do my scientific method this very first slide is phase one i'm going to delete what's in this slide and i'm going to paste in what i want the very first thing i want my students to do is i want them to define the question then I want them to tell me what resources they're going to gather, and then they're going to form a hypothesis. So I don't like this original formatting right here because I feel like this should really stand out. So I'm going to make that even larger. So I'm going about size 15. Maybe I bold it. I don't really need it bolted. Maybe I want it numbered instead. So, and now I don't like the numbering anyways. I was about to clear them out, but that's what I have. First question, second. Now you can go in and underneath of it, put in your like reasoning about what you want to do, go into more detail, but that's not really necessary. So define the question. This was just a text box that got put in place. Now I'm actually going to do the body of the text. So this is what my students are actually going to type. So I am going to do a text box right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit control A. I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to make this 12 font. And I'm going to say it is, well, let's use this font style. And that's what I want them to do. So that's their first box. Now, I want all these to have that same characteristic. So I can actually copy and paste each box. And now I'm going to use the arrow key. I'm just going to slide that down. And we'll do the same thing for that last one. But I'm going to run out of space. So I'm going to shorten it. because The hypothesis may not be as long anyways. So that gives a nice uniform look to that. And so that's phase one. If I want to insert an image, I can still do that. I can go insert image, I can search the web, and I can find anything I want to place in here 
and then drop it in my slides as such. I'll hold shift to kind of make that uniform. All right, so there's my first phase. So now I want to create phase two. Copy that, go back to view, master slide. I'm gonna make sure I'm on phase one right now. I'm gonna do new slide, rename it, and now we're on to phase two. Same thing again, I'm gonna clear this out. I'm gonna paste. I am now going to Go through and make this larger, bold again, and now same thing. Well, that's just the text body. Sorry, that's just the text boxes right there. Now I'm going to actually put in the body of my text. Select all. Same thing. I like 12 font. Let's try to make this look uniform. So I'm going to use the same font style. And now I'm going to copy and paste that and move down. If ever I start going too fast for you, feel free to pause or rewind. That's no problem. So there's my two points of data. And now I'm going to go into my third phase, which is just the draw conclusion section. And so now view. I just copied and pa copied that. So now I'm going to go back here. Make sure I'm on phase two. I'm going to do a new layout and now rename. Three. Now you're going to see the real benefit of this here in a second when all this kind of comes together. I'm going to give myself plenty of room on this. I'm not going to worry too much about some of the formatting right now because I want to get to the point where I'm showing you uh, what is actually taking place here. So now I'm going to go back to my main slide. I'm going to delete this guy. So he's gone. I'm going to go back into View Masters, and where I had that title slide, I don't need that anymore either. So I'm going to delete that. So now I just have my three layouts. Now what's really cool about this is now that I'm here, now I go New Slide. There's my Phase 1. I can't move any of this. I'm not going to alter any of this, but I have these text boxes that I can actually type in and fill this out. I get done with that, I go to Phase 2. Once again. I can't move any of this, but I have text boxes I can type. Now, I can alter these text boxes. I can add additional things in. I can put in my own pictures and all that. All that's still available, but I'm not going to alter this base layer. And lastly, I can do phase three. There it is. There's my scientific method worksheet all laid out in the way my teacher would want it in typeable boxes where I would need them. And it's all set and ready to go for me. That's it, guys. So that's master slides for scientific method. So the next thing we can apply is a book report. Now you can adapt this into so many different subjects. You can do this as a chapter summary rather than doing a book summary. So just keep an open mind on this, but this is a very useful method of using master slides. All right, we're gonna do a book report format for our master slides this time. So each of these is gonna be their own slide layout just like what I did with the um, scientific method but we're going to look at a different formatting techniques on different pieces so I'm going to go ahead and select everything and I'm going to go ahead and make adjustments to different styles so I'm going to switch some things up I'm not the biggest fan of that one let's go with this one and then I'm going to up the size just so it's ready to go and what I really like about this one, you'll notice each of these already has a kind of additional description piece. I'm going to include each of those in. I might drop their size down a little bit. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to drop it down to about a 10. So every one of these little example pieces, a little further description, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. That way when put these on there they're not taking up so much room but they're included so students have further uh, direction for what they're going to be doing so this one I'm going to do a little different anyway so I'm going to kind of hold off on that okay so I'm going to take the first one I'm going to copy it and just like last time we're going to go into view and we're going to master slide 
So yet again, I've got all these layouts and currently I'm sitting on that title page, so I'm not going to mess with it. But I'm going to go through and I'm just going to delete all of these. And now I'm on that last one. So I'm going to rename this and we're just going to do title. Um, go ahead and do title and author on this one. There actually is more to that, but we'll see that here shortly. So I'm going to now paste. And then here is the first thing I want my students to do. We're going to give the name of the author, or the title of the book, name of the author, and page number. So we can actually separate this again. I'm going to say, you know what? I want them to have the title. Go ahead and capitalize that. I want them to do the author. And then we'll do number of pages. Now, I am not the uh, really concerned on the, like the number of pages thing, but that's up to you if you want to have that on there. I'm going to move that piece right there so that goes together. There we go. And so this is how we're going to switch this up a little bit to make this fit with this. I might also say we're going to include a picture of the book. So I'm going to insert a shape. I'm going to give them a spot to actually put this picture in. So we'll put that right about here in the middle. And just like anything in slides, you can kind of arrange that to where it's going to be. I'm going to change its background just to be a little darker. And I'm going to widen the border. Just a little aesthetic pieces. So now on here, I'm going to say paste book cover here. And so now I'm just asking them to put in their picture right there. I'm going to make it a little smaller. And so that's going to stand out right there. And you can even highlight this if you're worried about your students overlooking it. You can have it where it's going to stand out a little bit more. And so there's that first slide. So now we're going to go into our second one. And now we're just going to copy this. And this one's going to be a little easier. View master. And I'm going to kind of go through these a little faster. We're going to do new layout because I had deleted all the other ones. I'm going to paste in what I want. And I'm going to say, all right, this is our task, but I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and when I rename, I'm going to give it that same name. You know what I forgot to do on this? I forgot to put in the actual text body placeholder, so I'm going to go in and do that now. Body placeholder here. This is where I want the title. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and slide that over. And a couple things you can do. So remember to underline the title of the book. We can actually go ahead and underline it for our students. And I think this would probably be okay at 14 font. And I'm okay with the Arial. And so now we're going to do the next body placeholder. We're going to do the author. And I'm going to have this one at just 12 font. And number of pages won't take up very much space. If you get to work on this and you notice something's off when your students are working on this, and you don't like how something looks, you can always go in and make adjustments and reassign it back out. All right, so back on this one, now I can put in that placeholder here as well. So identify the type of book, monitor, and his, da, da, da. so that one's just fine as doing there. And once again, we can insert our own little image on here if we wanted to, but I'm gonna just now go into the next thing. Identify the main character, write a two to three page description. Sorry, two to three uh, sentence description. So this is going to be very similar to that last one we just did. Say new There's our assignment, and then we're just going to do a body placeholder, and I'm not going to worry about formatting that. I'm just going to let them type on there. Now I go to my next one. 
book settings, same thing. I don't have a lot of editing to do here. Oh, I forgot to name that last one, so I'm going to have to go back and do that. That's okay. View, master. On this one, we're going to do a new layout. Thing here, we're going to do the body placeholder. Got that in. All right, so this is the settings is what this one's going to be called. And now on this one is identify the main character. I like that I can just copy and paste and just rename these, the name of the layouts with the actual tasks that the students are going to be doing. And this is the one that I like a little bit more because this is when we get into some real editing on how we want some of this to look. So I'm going to go to the master slide. And once again, as you're going through these, feel free to pause. Here, it's out of order. So anytime these get out of the way that you want, you can always delete. It doesn't really matter that they're out of order. But if ever you notice you put one where you didn't mean to. Okay, so this one has like several parts to it. And what I like about this is I can actually say, all right, we're going to give a brief description of the plot is the main part. So we can do that, and we actually have that be its own piece. I'm going to actually cut. I'm going to paste that in. So I've separated that piece out. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to paste it, and it's going to be separate. You're going to see what I'm doing here is actually coming through and creating. Kind of jumped all over the place on that. Um, I'm going to create columns basically for my students to respond in. So I'm going to grab all this text here and I'm going to make it center alignment, clear some of this excess out. Okay, so that's going to be one column, two columns, and three columns. And this is where you can actually start getting into like doing some extra visual things. Like I can put little line dividers. these will duplicate that that's the same thing as just saying copy and paste immediately let's make sure we remember to name this so this is that first question is what i'm going to go off of and so now i do my text boxes and i have my first one control all and i'm going to say i want all that as a 12 font all right same thing, I'm going to hit Control D, and I'm going to duplicate that. I'm just going to move it over here, duplicate, and move it over here. So that's going to end up being a very nice little piece to our assignment. And then we're just going to quickly knock out these last two. So this is the same process I've been doing, so I'm not going to get too... Now this is done. I've got all my pieces. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to just delete this first slide. So now my students have a, uh, let me get rid of that master one too. I don't need that title page anymore. Okay, let me try that again. So now students have a title author page. You see they have all the text boxes. It's the only place they can type. They can't do anything here, but when they go in and they say, okay, I'm going to search the web for my book. They can sit here and they actually paste in their book right here. And if you end up with a PNG, it is going to be transparent. So you just need to have that conversation with your students or they can kind of layer another object on there. But you see the point of that. They can put their picture in right there. Then they go to the next one and say, all right, I've done the title and author, description of the book. And they can type out their description here, but they can't do anything here. And I'm going to jump to that, give a brief description because I like this one. I've got these three columns already set up, already divided, separated. As I type, it's not going to spill into the next one because I've already determined this is that box size and it's very well balanced. Um, I meant to show this too on the title. It's already underlining for me. So I know I gave that reminder to the students, but I've also took care of that piece for, uh, for them. So just a little thing that all those editing pieces that you put in there they're going to carry through and something we didn't talk about you can come back into these view master slides 
and I have not pointed this out. We can actually alter uh, colors, and that's going to cause things to stand out a little better for you if you wanted to put some variation into uh, your slides. So now when a student goes back and looks at that, you see that's already edited on there. I've changed each of those colors. And so you really play with this. You make it look as unique as you want to. But that's it for um, making a uh, book report. All right, next we can look at a math study sheet. Now I know you could do proofs just the same way as kind of what we've been doing. It could be almost the same as that scientific method sheet. But I thought this would be a better idea as more of a study tool and be more universally appropriate. Doing the math um, example of this one, and you could easily do just like what we were doing and set up a thing for proofs. Um, the only reason I'm not showing proofs is I never really enjoyed them. So I want to do something that's more of a study tool for students. So here's what I was thinking. You tell what subject they're going to talk about, give them an example problem, a work through, and explanation. So these are the things I want students to do. So I'm actually going to just expand this out and put some additional spacing in here for students. And then I'm going to design all this right here. And we'll do a left alignment on this. And so subject is the topic that I want students to do. Um, so you can kind of think of that have them actually, you know, type out what the problem is and then work through. I would have them do this on a piece of paper and then just take a picture of that. So we'll give them a spot for that. So the very first thing is we'll have a subject box. Well, they're not going to need a lot of space for that one. So that was my bad on there. Give them a little bit there. Uh, the example problem shouldn't need terrible space on there. But they are going to probably need quite a bit for there and these last few. So now a spot for their work we're going to come off over to the side and we're going to insert a shape for them to put their work and so we'll come way over here we'll do this and we'll take up a little bit of space and then we'll say i just double click that that's how i got the text block on there insert picture of or work I never have been a big fan of my students having to type out their math, and so this lets them still do it on a piece of paper, but still keep it all visual. And then the rest of this is just going to be text box. So now I'm just going to grab all of this. So I edit, select all, copy. I'll go ahead and just say delete. And then I'm gonna go to view master. And then yet again, I can sit here and I can delete every one of these slides. And I'm going to rename this. And all these other elements on here, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to delete. Paste that in. There we go. Now, insert placeholder. We'll say that's a title box. Doesn't need to be very big. And we'll make it size 18. Cool. Then I'm going to do insert a, we can do subtitle, that'd be fine. Example of the problem, make sure it's going to fit in there. And then the work through is just this guy right here. Explanation of work, well, I can actually move that up a little farther than when I had it. Because I'm just doing the picture for that. And so this is actually just going to be a spot for them to type out their thoughts. Um, depending on how wordy you encourage your students to be, you can give them as much space as you need. I'm going to probably drop this down to about 10 font. Oops, let me make sure I select all. We'll do about 10 font. And then verifying your answer. Let's give them a little bit more space on there. Because I like that. Font size, I'm going to duplicate that. So that was at control D. And this is just them proving their answer. And then you can have them do this in a picture format too. But that is it. Let me get rid of the numbers on there. All right. So there's your five step process for having them do that. And now 
when we go back, there's our mass study pool. Here's every text block area they need, and now they have a spot to do their math work. All right, that is it for the math. Like I said, you could do very similar to the other things, doing proofs and set up the same way, but I thought this was just a really neat little way of having a student put in a sample of a math problem for them to study off of. So we could take the same ideas for social studies as well, but you would be looking at kind of that book report or maybe even that math study tool, but you could easily adopt this to social studies also. But that's everything I got for you guys. Thank you for taking the time and following along with this. And if you need to reach out to me, you can reach me at these two locations. And like I said, you can check out that YouTube channel from the start of the video. Thank you guys for your time.